A recent session of the House of Commons saw another applaudable call out of Justin Trudeau's government and its ridiculous and perpetual carbon tax, which has continued to make life really unaffordable for the larger percentage of the Canadian populace. On Friday, Conservative Party parliamentarian Dr. Leslin Lewis stated in the House of Commons that food bank use is at a record high in the country, but rather, unfortunately, the Trudeau Liberals have only doubled down on their ineffective carbon tax, which has done nothing but cause an unbearable hike in the price of gas and concurrently on the price of groceries and food in Canada. Lewis argued that the Trudeau government has failed to meet any of its climate targets and even worse, the carbon emission tax brings in revenue without actually reducing emissions. She went ahead to call on the Liberals to axe their failed ideological tax policy and provide relief for Canadians. And as usual, she was met with a blame-shifting counter-attack by Liberal Parliament members, including Minister of Rural Economic Development Guide Hutchings and Minister of Natural Resources Jonathan Wilkinson. Let's take a look at the typical Liberal blame shifting the atrix rather than heeding to the arguments of fellow parliamentarians who represent the voice of millions of Canadians calling on the Trudeau government to reduce, or better still, scrap the carbon tax completely. The Liberal carbon tax has driven up the cost of home heating, fuel and groceries. Canadians are suffering. People are wearing their winter coats inside of their homes just to keep down heating costs. Mothers are diluting their baby's milk just to stretch it. And yet, Canada pitifully lacks and ranks 58 out of 63 countries for climate action. Will the Liberal government stop forcing their failed climate tax on suffering Canadians? The Honourable Minister for Rural Development. Mr. Speaker, I really find it quite rich coming from the party opposite who promised a climate plan and we haven't delivered. They haven't delivered because I can tell you the people in my riding, they want action on climate right now. The impacts, the impacts of Fiona are still being felt on the ground. Now not only to the damage done to personal homes, to infrastructure and wastewater, municipal infrastructure, add four feet of snow to that, Mr. Speaker. My, my constituents want action on climate now. The Honourable Member for Haldeman Norfolk. I remind the Liberal government that they are in government. They need to present a plan. This government lacks credibility when it has not met a single climate, climate target. A tax on the backs of average Canadians does nothing to drive down emissions. It drives up poverty. More Canadians are relying on food banks than ever before. The food banks fear that they are going to run out of food. The carbon tax is not an environmental plan. It is a tax plan. Will this government cancel their cruel carbon tax on gas, groceries and home heating? Tax the, tax. the Honourable Minister of Natural Resources. And yes, we are in government, and we are in government in part because we actually have a credible plan on climate. I think, I think Canadians actually expect from His Majesty's official opposition to have a climate plan, which they clearly do not. Mr. Speaker, affordability today is critically important, but so is affordability tomorrow. We cannot leave the kinds of costs to our children that we will if we do not address climate change. The Climate Institute estimates $100 billion a year by 2050 if we do not act to mitigate carbon emissions. We are going to do so in a manner that will promote economic opportunity and address climate change. Apparently, one of the most pronounced negative effects of the Liberals' failed carbon tax is the fact that the number of people using food banks in Canada is at an all-time high. The average Canadian now finds themselves in the unenviable position of having to choose between paying their rent or buying food. Since the beginning of the pandemic, it turns out there has been a 5% increase in the number of people who visit the food bank on a monthly basis, as stated in a study that the Whistler Community Services Society compiled. Before the pandemic, they averaged roughly 250 new customers every single month. But in the last two months, they had 1,400 people come through their doors, which was a record high in the food bank's history of 30 years. The study also included a snapshot of usage which revealed that there were about 1.5 million visits to food banks earlier this year. And when compared to the same period in the previous year, this is a 15% increase. Meanwhile, the snapshot method used meant that not all food banks reported the number of visits, Therefore, the report indicated that the situation might be even more severe than previously thought because not all trips were counted. And it would be disheartening to learn that Gizam Kaya, the manager of Food Security and Community Development at Whistler Community Services Society, has disclosed that many people have transitioned from being food givers to being customers of the food bank.
And of course, just as indicated by respondents of the survey conducted by UCSS, the primary reason people have been using food banks this year is basically the outrageous spike in food costs, which is a result of the ludicrous carbon tax imposed by the liberals. But in a rather unfortunate manner, Justin Trudeau seems to be just starting with his frustrating emission tax agenda, despite the fact that it has apparently failed to meet the majority of the climate targets it had set, the liberal government's plan for a healthy environment and economy includes a carbon tax that will be phased in over eight years at a rate of $170 per ton. And in a pretty absurd manner, the federal government has not yet released any quantitative economic analysis of the implications of its plan other than to declare that the policy will not have any effect on the country's gross domestic product. However, it has been revealed that the argument made by the liberals is in direct contradiction to the findings of a great number of earlier studies that attempted to estimate the impact that limiting greenhouse gas emissions through its carbon tax would have on the economy of the country. It turns out that even after accounting for jobs that will be created as a result of new government spending and rebates of the carbon charges to households, the Fraser Institute forecasts that the Liberals' carbon tax will have significant adverse effects, such as a decrease of 1.8 percentage points in gross domestic product and a net loss of approximately 184,000 jobs. At the same time, the Trudeau Liberals' carbon tax will result in rather significant reductions in revenues from other aspects of the tax system. As a result, the government will not be able to refund household payments related to the carbon tax to the extent that it has promised without incurring a deficit. On the other end, the increase in net government revenue will only be sufficient to offset around 28% of the full impact of the carbon taxes on final demand. And even if the government were to rebate 90% of the revenue and use 10% of it to enhance spending in some other area, it would still add approximately $22 billion yearly to the combined deficit of the government. It's rather disheartening that the Canadian system under the Liberals is just so frustrating. By sidelining the oil and gas industry, Trudeau seems to have given Qatar and Venezuela the deal of a lifetime while doubling down on his failed woke agenda and jacking up emission taxes that drives inflation and arguably make life unbearable and unaffordable for most Canadian households. The Liberals should heed the voice of Canadians now and provide relief by axing their failed ideological tax policies. What's your own view on this? Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this. Also, share with as many people as possible, and keep in mind that we are always determined to boldly expose the hypocrisy of the left wing and mainstream media while keeping you updated and conscious. See you next upload. Thanks for watching.